Hello, I'm TatoCat. Welcome to my channel. Today we are playing Ace Academy. I'd like to apologize in advance for the louder than usual background noises you might hear. My window is open because I'm too cheap to use the AC. And uh, yeah, anyways, without further ado, let us continue on with our usual stuff. So previously, um, Cody was pissed off at us because we decided to actually fight instead of not fight and she still hasn't forgiven us yet. And then May kind of sits down next to us and tells us what happened uh, in the past between Cody, May, and some guy. And I guess Cody liked him and May told him and he was a dick about it and broke Cody's heart and now she's Cody. And that's pretty much where we left off. Hey, Blink. Oh, thanks. But don't get used to it. Anna Bogatia has a lot of practicing to do. It won't be that easy the next time we battle. You call that easy? You're still going to lose. This was a good fight. It was, and it would have been better if Cowdy didn't leave my you in a lurch. <laughs> Whatever. We're over that. If the next match was half as good as the one we just had, I'll be satisfied. May grins. Don't worry. Us girls won't be going down easy. From the corner of my eye, I spot Cowdy uh, and Sho into the pilot's lounge. Sho's still alive and in one piece. They must have worked things out with each other. That's a relief. Cowdy searches the room and briefly makes eye contact with me before glancing away. And to my surprise, she walks over to us. Show follows. Hey, it's just a surprise when Cody and Show sit with us. What's going on, Brosif? Nothing much. Where's Mayu? Class. I look over at Cody. Hey, Cody. Hi. She looks sideways at May. Hi, May. May doesn't react right away. Then squeals in delight and throws her arms around Cody. Hi! Uh, May! Stop it! Cody pulls away in a huff while May laughs. The four of us continued to chat together. The tension felt from yesterday are completely gone. The tensions. Okay, the tensions felt from yesterday are completely gone. As if the day never happened. May even got Cowardy to laugh. Eventually, we all go our separate ways as everyone heads to their class or other obligations. I still have some free time. Sho, Yuna, we'll hang out with Sho again. I don't really want to hang out with any of um, the other girls too often because I don't know how it's going to affect Mayu. So I, I'm pretty sure Sho is like the neutral safe choice. I'm in the mood for a sweet latte. I was like, I don't know why the word latte confused me. So I decided to make my way across the campus, pause towards the arcade cafe. Watch out! Oh no, what's wrong, male student? Ninja reflex. Is that really what Ninja Reflex is? Okay, there we go. 
I instinctively sidestep and watch a frisbee apply past my head. Three guys approach me and I recognize Sho as one of them. Frosif? Sorry about that. Excellent work, Sho. I especially like the part where you did the mid-air twirl and completely whipped your throw. That was going to be a legendary move. It just so happens that my fingers were a little sweaty. I'm going to scroll back and see if we could have caught it because I didn't really dodge. Get smacked. Watch out! Stand still. Watch out! Okay, so Watch Ninja out. Reflex is really the only smart choice there. And his fingers were sweaty. Cool. Sure. The two guys glance at each other, and then, then laugh. Wait, don't I have class with these guys? One of them turns towards me. Anyway, you okay? His eyes widen when he recognizes me. It's the chick magnet! Oh, he, he's one of the guys uh, who uh, was there with when Valerie gave me her number. Yep, I have class with them. You're right! Wait, what? Where? <laughs> they both point to me. This guy. This guy? This guy! This guy! You guys can't see me, but I put a, a pointed to me. I'm pretty sure they're referring to the first time I met Valerie in class. Hey guys. You know each other? Yeah, he's been teaching us how to pick up the ladies. What do you mean? I don't recall talking to you more than that one time. What? Don't deny your talents! We've seen you hanging around campus with that blonde bombshell! Well, yeah. She's our team engineer. Show perks up. Oh, you guys mean Valerie? You know her too? They both stare at Show with awe. Um, yeah, Valerie takes care of our gears. Takes care of their gears. Oh my goodness. Show and I blink. These guys have a really overactive imagination. The pair share a knowing look with each other <laughs> then cross their arms and nod we have a ways to go <laughs> but one day we'll reach your level show shrugs anyway he looks at me what brings you here brosif you mean to the outside <laughs> Just heading to the cafe, you? I was just showing these guys an awesome frisbee throw I saw on MeTube. <laughs> MeTube. Awesome, he says. They laugh again. Oh, I'll show you. Watch! Is he gonna mess up again? Joe grabs the frisbee and takes a few steps back to give himself space. Then he takes a running start to build momentum, jump spins in the air, and whips the frisbee free. It goes flying. That actually looked pretty cool. Even the two other guys are impressed. This frisbee curves back like a boomerang, but instead of coming back to us, it heads straight for a well-dressed older man in a blazer. Crap! Not again! Watch out! Oh my goodness. 
Oh, show. Sure. The man catches the frisbee in frisbee midair. He looks around and makes a beeline towards us when he spots us. Uh-oh. Uh, it was nice hanging out with you, but, uh, we've got class. Yeah, we'll talk to you guys later. Wait, where are you going? What about your frisbee? Keep it. The two friends speed walk away into the distance. Cowards! Sho looks at me, then gulps. As the man approaches, his eyes widen in surprise, but not nearly as wide as Sho's. Akio. Hello, Sho. Um. Big Brother, maybe? They look eerily similar. You two know each other? Show nods. This is my brother. I thought so. All traces of laughter is gone from his voice. He's strangely stiff and formal. It's obvious he's not very comfortable around his brother. I'm Akio Shinjiro. Satsimaimo. He smiles politely. What are you doing here? I'm the guest lecturer for Sino Robotics and the modern business world. For what robotics? What are you doing here? I'm the guest lecturer for Sino Robotics and the modern business world. Christino? Where'd the tea come from? Oh, what are you I doing did. here? I'm the guest lecturer for Sino Robotics and the modern Sino business Robotics. world. Sino Robotics. Sino Robotics. Cool. Why didn't you tell me you were coming? Although Sho is careful to keep any sense of bitterness or disapproval from his voice, it's clear he's not pleased by this surprise. They don't act very brotherly. I only arrived a few hours ago. I was going to text you after the first lecture. He smiles. But since you're here, let's pencil in something for the weekend. Show shrugs. I'll have to check my schedule first. Akio nods. Of course. Let's say tentative for Saturday. Sure, but I might be busy. Then let me know when you can. Akio looks at me. You're welcome to join us. I'd like to get to know Sho's friends he doesn't share much about. Don't you have a lecture to go to? Akio sighs. He checks his watch. Correct. Let's continue this conversation over the weekend. Bye. Whoa, you can just feel all of the brotherly Goodbye. love. As Akio disappears into a nearby building, I look at Sho. His jaw is set and his eyes are clouded. This is really out of character for him. What was that all about? Why are you being a jackass? <laughs> I'm not getting involved. I feel like we could probably be like the cold character throughout this whole thing, but it doesn't seem to get us anywhere story-wise. It feels very boring. It's not like, oh, he's the cool guy who's mysterious and whatnot. It's just, I'm not saying nothing, and then nothing seems to happen with that. What was that about? Your brother seems nice. Sho just shrugs. He rarely ever talks about his family, and I 
guess his family being here still isn't enough to get him to open up about it, them. You're not exactly yourself around him. You don't know him like I do. What do you mean? He's not as he seems. I don't trust him just showing up out of the blue. I'm sure he knows his brother better, but I didn't get that feeling. He lives and works in London, so the fact that he's here is very suspicious. Well, he said he was invited to lecture for class. Show doesn't seem convinced. It's too convenient. And why now? Regardless, he did come all the way. Aren't you going to at least see him this weekend? Show size. Yes, but only because he'll be a nuisance if I don't. Do you want me to come on Saturday? If you want to. I don't want to intrude. No, it's fine. Actually, I think I prefer you coming. Maybe then I'll be on his best behavior. Uh, okay. This is getting really awkward. Part of me thinks it would be a bad idea to go, but maybe I can help mediate and smooth things over between them. Anyway, I'm going to head off. Oh! Okay, so... On occasion, I've noticed that they're... that they don't voice some of the lines. Alright. Have a good one. Show nods and heads towards his dorm. I can't help but feel a bit uneasy from that entire exchange. My phone rings unexpectedly. It's sorry. Why is our alarm clock sound the same noise as our ringtone when our alarm clock is not our phone? It's bizarre. Hello? I've got a surprise for you. Come to the hangar. Are we gonna find out about Eagle's super special power? What is... She hung up. Of course she hung up. I guess I better go see what's up. After swiping myself into the hangar, I make a beeline to Eagle. Valerie is perched in front of my terminal but jumps up and she seems once she sees me she moves from the terminal and gestures for me to sit voila well, I stare at the scrolling code on the screen she's got to stop acting like I can read this stuff. What is this? It's a manual documentation. It needs to be cleaned up before it can be fully understood, though. So, you called me over to show me something that's not complete? Allie crosses her arms. I thought you'd be able to appreciate the magnitude of this discovery. I'm not trying to downplay the importance of this. Besides, my script is parsing it as we speak. It'll be done in a few minutes. We wait patiently for her program to finish running. I watch as she keeps an eye on her scripts. She's confident in her program, yet keeps glaring at it exposing the eagerness behind beneath her calm demeanor 
I can't help but wonder. How did you get into engineering? Girls can't be engineers. No. Like, if you were a guy, I probably would ask the same question. That's not what I said. Valerie laughed. It's like a puzzle. Ooh, I like puzzles. What? Taking things apart and putting it back together. Finding new ways to piece everything together to make it a better product. The possibilities are endless, even if we can't see all the solutions just yet. And you just discovered that by accident? She shrugs and becomes strangely aloof. Things broke around the house a lot. If I didn't fix it, then it would be broken forever. Why not just buy a new one? Because some people are poor. It always worked fine once fixed. Why spend that extra money? But why did you have to fix it? Why not your parents? Some parents aren't around. She frowns in disdain. My mom couldn't be bothered with things like that. If the computer broke, she'd pretend the problem didn't exist until she needed to use it. Then she'd go and buy a new one because she needed to use it immediately. Money was always tight and that's why I started trying to fix things. The first thing I ever properly fixed was my bike. I was 15 and my neighbor at the time was a young woman at university. She helped me fix it and when she learned I was interested in this stuff, she gave me a bunch of how-to books for my birthday. Aww, that's a nice neighbor. I guess I was lucky that my dad was pretty handy. He taught me how to take care of my things. Valerie grins playfully. Could've fooled me. Eagle's always a little worse for wear by the time he gets to me. Isn't that right, Eagle? She coos affectionately at my gear. It's not a puppy. It's clearly a bird. A sharp beep interrupts our conversation. Valerie whips back towards the screen. It's done. Valerie and I both lean to get a better look at the screen. I turn my head to ask her a question when her hair brushes my cheeks. It's soft and smells like flowers. I hadn't realized how close we were to each other and now. Valerie is too focused on the screen to notice. The slender figure, her slender fingers, dance across the keyboard. Oh, this makes a lot of sense. What makes a lot of sense? Why your core only activated that one time? The function of the core was set to debug mode with a single run instance. English, please? The overdrive mode was meant to be used for testing purposes, so it was set to only activate once. What does that mean? Meaning the one time it went off, it was only supposed to go off the one time because it was a test, so when it went off the one time, it deactivated. So now you have to program it to act, to go off more than just the one time. It means if we can figure out how to change the setting and find out the parameters of activation, you could use the overdrive mode on demand. My eyes widen as I consider the possibilities. Are you serious? Yeah, in theory anyway. She squints at the code. That's not even the best part. Here are blueprints with algorithms and formulas. What do they say? Valerie puts a finger to her lip. Hmm, it seems to be incomplete. But we might be able to use this and a bit of reverse engineering to fill in the gaps. If we can figure this out, 
We can understand the details of the core. Good stuff. If only women come with a manual. If only women came with a manual too. Can we have it ready for the next match? Yeah, can we have it ready for the ma next match? Hmm? When can we have the overdrive mode ready? Valerie taps her lip. I'm not gonna lie, it'll take some time. There's a lot to fill in here. But I'll give it my best. Why did Dad include this function for my core? And why didn't he tell me? I have so many questions and too few answers. Let's keep this a secret. A secret? Yeah, there's no point in getting the team's hopes up when we don't even know if this will work. Plus, I don't need anyone snooping around my gear. I look Pointedly at Valerie. She smiles innocently. What? That's what brought us together. Are you saying you wish you'd never met me? Of course not. But one Valerie is more than enough. She smirked. Don't I feel special? Valerie gets to work and I watch her for a while. She's working too fast for me to comprehend what she's doing and I don't want to interrupt her groove to explain to it to me. After a few minutes, she glances back at me. How about you sit in this chair and I'll watch you work? I guess she doesn't like me looking over her shoulder. I don't blame her. I hate that too. I'll just give you some space then. She turns back to the terminal. Thanks. I'll let you know once I'm done. After saying goodbye, I leave her to do her thing. I still have some time before I head home tonight. Just head home tonight. What do I feel like doing? <laughs> the way that it's phrased, what do I feel like doing? And then Valerie. <laughs> uh, I guess Valerie's our only choice there. I wonder what Valerie's up to. I guess we're finally gonna do that thing where we walk around town. Oh, my headphones are falling off my head. There we go. I dial her number and wait for her to answer. Hello? Hey Valerie, you busy? Yeah, I'm about to go meet a friend for some coffee. Oh, anyone I know? It's you, silly. Oh. I'll meet you at the cafe in front of the bookstore. Sounds like a plan. I'll see you in a bit. I make my way to the cafe. Valerie is waiting for me in the booth by the time I arrive. It's rude to keep a lady waiting. Sorry. You? A <laughs> lady? Ha. Ah. Stare her down. Yeah, let's do that stare. I'm not even going to grace her with an answer. Well? I don't respond. Valerie watches me and smirks. You like what you see? No. Yes. I don't know how to answer. No. Eh. <laughs> I've seen better. Valerie sure. laughs. That's why you can't keep your eyes off me. I quickly look away. Have you ordered yet? We we cannot uh, phase Valerie. No, I was waiting for a certain someone to get their butt over here. So, 
what I'm hearing is you want to see my butt. Valerie smirks. Give me a twirl then. Okay, we'll see how this coffee date goes in the next episode. I'm Tato Cat. Have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon.